Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video is about four terms which are sometimes used interchangeably. These are bioconcentration, bioaccumulation, and biomagnification or bioamplification. Now, bioconcentration refers to the accumulation and absorption of some pollutant from water only by some organism. And now I'll come to bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation refers to the absorption and accumulation of some substance by an organism, not just from water, but from various sources like food, air, or even water. Now what happens here is uh, the concentration of the substance keeps increasing in the same organism, not across the trophic levels, but within some same trophic level. So it, it could be at let's say some stage of the food chain and not across the food chain. So this is common between bioconcentration and bioaccumulation that they occur at some common level of the food chain. Now I'll come to biomagnification which is also called bioamplification. So here they can be used interchangeably. But bioconcentration and bioaccumulation should not be used interchangeably. So I'll tell you what happens in uh, biomagnification. Now see biomagnification is a process where uh, let's say there is some organism A. The organism A had some concentration of some persistent pollutant and now this organism A was eaten by organism B and uh, please remember organism B would not eat just one A, it would eat several A's. So the concentration of the persistent pollutant would increase to a very large extent in B and similarly when C would eat B, it would eat several B's so the concentration would increase even further. And as we move to the highest level of the food chain, the concentration of the persistent pollutant would increase by leaps and bounds. Now there are certain conditions which are required for biomagnification or bioamplification to occur. These are that the pollutant should be persistent, that is it should be able to survive for long in the body and should not break down. And it should also be fat soluble and not water soluble because if it is water soluble the body would remove it from the body by excreting it out. And another condition required is that it should be biologically active. Now I will take some examples, a uh, very famous example is that of DDT. It is fat soluble and uh, uh, we have all witnessed the harmful effects of DDT and an important uh, example would be that the egg shells of the birds at the highest trophic level had become very thin so they were unable to reproduce for example the eagles and uh, other than this we can talk about heavy metals also for example mercury and lead. Uh, and these have very harmful poisoning effects. For example, mercury poisoning can impair the cognitive faculties. Lead poisoning uh, can also have several uh, harmful effects on uh, either the reproductive system or uh, kidney. So they can have, and uh, sometimes the bioaccumulation or biomagnification can also be carcinogenic. So this is the clarification about these terms. So thank you very much for watching my video. And please stay tuned, I will be uploading some more videos soon. Thank you.